Hello everyone and welcome back to PM Studios C Sharp Programming Tutorials number 11. Today is going to be the last programming tutorial in the series, so go ahead and sit back and prepare to learn how to work with Windows application forms. Um, this is something we haven't really touched base on before, so it should be pretty exciting for you guys. Um, I am going to be covering how to do the basic design of Windows application forms and then how to code them. Um, I'll be showing you some of the properties and so on and so forth forth, yada yada yada. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started because it is a bit of a time consuming process setting these guys up. We're going to go to new project and instead of doing the console application like we've been doing for the, since the beginning of the series, we're going to go ahead and do a new Windows form and my mouse double click so it's just Windows form application 1. You can call it whatever you want. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stretch this out. You always want more space than you think you need. Um, just so that you can reduce it without having to break away from the formatting to uh, increase its size. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a text box, which will be down in the T's. And if you notice, I am in the toolbox here under the All Windows Forms. Um, you can use the common controls as well. That has a much more abbreviated list of items. Actually, you know, let's go ahead and work with the common controls list so that you guys can see everything that I'm doing without me having to scroll. So we're going to go ahead and bring in one text box. And as you see, uh, that's been brought in. Uh, you can organize it however you like. I'm just going to go ahead and have it snap to uh, proper distance from the top and uh, from the left. Then we're going to go ahead and, with it selected, Control c Control v twice, uh, make it three times actually. Uh, we want to make sure to put these in order because if we don't, then it's going to become very difficult to work with. So, ugh. there we go. And they don't have to be perfectly spaced right now. We're just getting them kind of organized. So now that we have all of them in the same row, we're going to go ahead and drag this guy over. And I'm sorry my screen keeps switching. My mouse is double clicking on me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to shrink down text box 2. As you can see, it's text box 2. Uh, we're going to shrink that down to about that size. Then drag this guy over. I'm going to go back into our toolbox while leaving that space there. I'm going to drag in a label in between them. And the purple line means that the text, the bottom of the text, is aligned with whatever it's lining up with. So in this case, all four text windows and the label now have all of their text aligned with each other, which is what we want because it's nice, neat, and uh, very easy to read. It flows better for the readers. Um, so we're going to go ahead and drag this guy over here and then drag him closer. Now we have almost all of the space that we need consumed, so we're going to drag in one button and like the text boxes, once we have that brought in, we're going to copy and paste it once, and then drag this guy up. Probably format him there. And now we're going to go back to the form and shrink it down to an acceptable size so that we don't have all of this free space. Because um, even though uh, it doesn't do much, you will notice a performance change. So with Form 1 selected, while we're at it, let's go ahead and go over here to the Properties window, which is in the bottom right, and look for the item called Text. Now the text is the title of the form, so we're going to go ahead and change that to um, Basic Calculator, or whatever you want to call your first program. We're going to hop on the button 1, we're going to change this to Calculate, then we're going to hop on button 2, that's fine. We needed that open anyways. We're going to hop on a button 2 and change its text to clear. Now go ahead and double click on calculate and you'll notice that it opens up the form1.cs and it'll put you automatically in the private void button 1 underscore click with the um, with the variables object sender event arguments object sender and event arguments e um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to start creating the, uh, the program that we wrote last tutorial in this, in this uh, little method here. So we're going to go uh, float, we're going to call it uh, num1, 
and num2. We no longer need the answer float because we will just be assigning the answers directly into the text box. This removes another hurdle and saves some memory. And then we're going to go ahead and bring in the character operation. I'm just going to call it opper, save some more typing time. And we're going to go console. Actually, we don't need to even put in any prompts because the form acts as our prompt. And also, we don't need to implement any uh, do again loops anymore because this clear button acts as our do again. So, it's a beautiful thing. And do num1 equals text box one dot text. Of course, we need to convert that, so it's going to be convert dot two single put the text box one dot text in parentheses and there you go and now we can just copy this and we can use it for num2 as well so num2 will be text box 3 I know that's kinda confusing but you'll see why and then we have opper equals convert dot two character text box 2 dot text. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and jump back to the form real fast and explain why. Because if you look here, we have this big text, which will be number one, that is text box one. Then we have this middle one, which will be the equation operator, which is text box two. And then we have text box three, which will be number th number two. And then text box four will be answer. So what we need to do is we need to jump into the text box four and scroll up until you find the read only option and change it from false to true. And this will make it so that people cannot type inside the read only. They can only read what is output there. Um, so it makes it easier and it prevents the users from accidentally screwing up their information. Um, so it's a beautiful process. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and bring in our if statements again. I'm going to go if opper equals equals plus. Uh, we've done this in the last tutorial, so I'm just going to jump through it without too much commentary. Um, it's going to be actually there's a minor difference. We're going to go text box four dot text equals convert dot to string and put in parentheses num one plus num two. And now we can go ahead and, oops, I forgot my semicolon. Yeah, make sure you have a uh, proper formatting before you go copy things, or you end up creating yourself more errors that you don't need. Alright, so there we go. I'm going to go else if, change the operation to subtraction, and copy this one more time, control. And also, if you don't want to tab everything manually, um, or untab everything manually, you can just push Control Z once after you paste it, and it'll it'll untab it for you. I don't know why it automatically tabs everything. I think it's because I'm putting spaces in. But um, either way, that's how you do that. Easier than what we were doing last time. So as I said before, or in the last tutorial, it will automatically pick up a one divided by zero error. So we don't need to put in any we don't need to put in any catch statements in here. Um, alternatively, what I would like to suggest you guys do is you'd put in an else statement and make it so that uh, you'd have to create another form, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. And then you'd reference the form in there so that if they were to put in something that wasn't working or congealing right, then you could catch them on that and let them know. Um, then we need to double click on the clear button and it will bring you into button 2 underscore click and we just need to go text box 1 dot text equals and then put empty quotes and close it out then copy it and paste it four times or three times rather and then just change the number of the text box from 2 to 4 and that way whenever you click the clear button it clears out all four of the text boxes so let's go ahead and run this real fast and as you can see, it's a nice, small, easy to understand form. There's really no confusion in there. I'm going to do 12 plus 12 and click calculate. Should come out with 24, which it does. We can go minus, should come out with zero. Then times, it should come out with 144. 
and then divided by, and it should come out with one. All right, so we can clear it, it clears it out, so we have officially tested all of the operations we can do in it, and just to show you guys that it does pick up the, uh, the one divided by zero error, we have one divided by zero equals infinity. So that is it for this tutorial. Um, actually, no, it is not. I apologize. Um, I do want to show you, uh, if you want to add another form into your program, you right-click on the title of the project, so mine is Windows, Form, Windows Forms Application 1. Right-click on that, click on Add New Item, and you can click on Windows Form, name it whatever you want, so you could name it that error form that I was referring to in the last tutorial or whatever you like. And that's the same way you would also add classes, which I believe I have gone over before. You can just go to Add Class. Um, and the same thing with a Windows Form, Add Windows Form. You don't have to go into the new item unless you don't see it here. So once you do that, you do the same thing, organize your form, and then you'd go back to the classes and the objects, uh, classes and object or method encapsulation, and reference that new form in as your error handling form. So that is it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, until next time, I hope you have a good day.